Hello, you're on Pablo Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on integrating AWS Single Sign-On with Okta. On this episode, I will be working on the underlying Okta infrastructure and integration to make this work. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. On this episode right here, I have set up my Okta developer account and stored Okta related information in AWS using parameter store in Systems Manager. I'm going to consume these parameter store entries and set up the appropriate provider for Okta. But before I go any further, let me show you how I use AWS single sign-on currently. On my VS Code terminal, I have a set of pre-configured AWS profiles on my local machine. And if I want to initialize my AWS credentials through AWS Vault, I run this command. I have not been authenticated yet, so this will open a web browser session that will allow me to authenticate via AWS Single Sign-On. And so if I switch to my browser and log into AWS Single Sign-On using my provisioned account, and after a successful login, I need to click the Allow button to let my terminal session start integrating with AWS. And once the authorization is successful, I can then go back to my VS Code terminal. And then from here, I can start running AWS CLI as well as Terraform commands that require integration with AWS. After I have set up Okta integration with AWS Single Sign-On, this entire workflow will change and we will see that once our infrastructure is up. But the first thing that I need to do is update my infrastructure code for all the Okta resources that I need for the setup. And so let me head to my VS Code Explorer and then on my backend.tf, I need to add a required providers block that will instruct Terraform to load the Okta provider on my infrastructure context. And then on my providers.tf, I will configure a new provider block for Okta and use the values I stored in my parameter store in AWS. This is what's going to initialize the API integration with Okta. In the previous episode on this series, I have set up the parameter store resource blocks for my Okta parameters. So if I open my main.tf, these parameter store resources are the ones that are defined inside this file. So let me go back to my providers.tf and update the Okta parameters. And now I'm all set to configure the Okta resources that I need. And so on my main.tf, the first resource block that I need to set up is my Okta app SAML resource. The first property that I need to set inside this block is a pre-configured app. I am intending to integrate with AWS Single Sign-On, so I will set the value of this property to Amazon AWS SSL. I will also set the label property of this resource and set an arbitrary value. The next property that I need to set is the username template. This property tells Okta which field to use when propagating user credentials to AWS Single Sign-On. And I have set this up to use the email property in Okta. I also need to set up app settings JSON, which as the name implies, is the settings specific to AWS Single Sign-On. When I set up my AWS Single Sign-On, I stored both my ACS URL and issuer URL in parameter store in Systems Manager. So to fetch the values, I will head to my data.tf and I will set all the necessary data reference blocks for both my ACS URL and issuer URL. With those data references set, let me head back to my main.tf. I can then update the ACS URL to fetch its value from the ACS URL data reference. And also set the entity ID using the issuer URL data reference. And last but not the least, to make this Okta SAML resource active, I will add the status property and set the value to active. The next resource that I need to set is the Okta group. This will be the identity group that will be configured within Okta and also determine certain roles and permissions for each user. As you can see, this resource block is pretty simple. In order to make my infrastructure code extensible, I'm going to create this resource based on an input variable. So on my variables.tf, I am going to define a new variable and call it Okta group list. I'm going to change the type of this variable into a list of a custom object that contains a name and a description. I am doing a simple implementation of the integration between my AWS Single Sign-On and Okta. And so I will create a default value for this variable for an Okta group called ps-administrator. 
back to my Octa Group resource inside my main.tf. I will then introduce a for each property and interpolate my new variable. So what I've done here is converted my Octa Group list input variable from a list to a map that uses the name of the group as the key. With this for each property, I can then set the name and description properties using the values set in each element of the map. And now that I have Octa Group resource, I need to set up group assignment resource. And the first property that I need to set is the app ID, which needs to point to the Octa application SAML resource that I created earlier. And then inside this resource, I also need to introduce the group block. This group block identifies which Octa groups have access to the Octa app SAML that I've set up. Again, I want my infrastructure code extensible. And so instead of explicitly defining the group block, I will make this dynamic. I will use the same for each block that I used on my Octa group resource. And then inside the content block, I will set the ID property to point to the appropriate Octa group ID. And the priority property will simply be an index of the group name in the list. And that's all the change that I need to set. So time to stand up my infrastructure. So let me head to my VS Code terminal. I already have an active AWS session from earlier. And so all I have to do now is export my default workspace and start running my Terraform commands. And now that my infrastructure is up, I'm going to head to my browser and access my Okta admin account. From the dashboard page, I will click on my SSO apps and I see the AWS single sign-on application that's created when I ran my Terraform commands. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and I will head to the sign-on tab on this page. And on the rightmost side of this page, if I scroll all the way down and click the view SAML setup instructions on the SAML setup section, this opens up a page with instructions on setting up SAML integration. I'm interested in downloading my Okta metadata file, which is located somewhere here. I am going to copy this link and open a new tab and load that page. And then I'm going to download this file and save it locally. I need to change the identity provider of my AWS single sign-on. So let me head to my AWS web console and access my AWS single sign-on page. And then I'm going to settings and on the rightmost side of this page, I'm going to select actions and then change identity source. And then I'm going to select external identity provider from the options. Scroll down this page and under the identity provider metadata, I'm going to select the IDP SAML metadata choose file button and then navigate to the place where I stored my metadata on my local machine and upload that file. And then at the bottom of the page, I'll click on next and then enter accept on the text field to proceed with the flow. I need to enable automatic provisioning on my AWS single sign-on. What this will do is allow for Okta users and groups to be propagated automatically from Okta into AWS single sign-on. This allows me to control and centralize user access provisioning through Okta instead of AWS single sign-on. And so on this page, I will click the enable button on the panel for automatic provisioning. This pop-up page provides two important information, the endpoint that Okta will connect to and the token Okta will use with the integration. I'm going to store both of these information somewhere safe so I can draw them later when I start configuring Okta. With my AWS single sign-on configured for SAML integration, let me head to the application that I have set up on my Okta account. What I need to do first is head to the push groups tab. This is where I'm going to configure the automatic access provisioning integration between Okta and AWS single sign-on. So let me go ahead and click enable provisioning. And then from this page, I'll go ahead and click configure API integration. Tick the enable API integration checkbox. These two fields correspond to the SIM endpoint and token that I have set up previously when I enabled automatic provisioning in AWS single sign-on. So let me go ahead and fill this up. And to test the API credentials before saving, I'm going to go ahead and click test API credentials. And that was successful. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this.
And now that my Okta integrates with AWS Single Sign-On for access provisioning, I need to enable what needs to be propagated from Okta to AWS Single Sign-On. So I'll click the edit link in here and then enable all these checkboxes in here and then save my changes. I also need to ensure that the Okta groups also get propagated to AWS Single Sign-On. So what I need to do is head back to the Push Groups tab and then click on Push Groups and then select find a group by role. I'm going to set the name of this role to PS group role. And then I want all groups that start with PS to be propagated from Okta to AWS Single Sign-On. And then I'm going to go ahead and click create role. And now that all the elements of the automatic provisioning is in place, let me head to the assignments tab on this Okta application. When I wrote my infrastructure code for this Okta application, I have not set up any user specific permissions. However, I have defined an Okta group that has permission to this app. So if I head to the groups filter, I can see the PS administrator group that I've set up inside my code. At this point, I don't have any actual users that have access to this application in Okta yet. So this is what I'm going to do next. I will click on the PS administrator link. And on this page, I can start assigning specific people into this Okta group. So let me assign myself into this group by clicking on assign people and then add my account into the group and then save my changes. What I'm going to do next is test my access. So on this page, I'm going to switch to an end user session by clicking on this icon right here and then click my end user dashboard. And I can see the AWS single sign-on app available for me to use. So let me go ahead and click this. I managed to get into AWS single sign-on. However, my access to the services in AWS has not been configured properly yet. So what I need to do is pull out the repository that I created when I set up my Terraform AWS single sign-on infrastructure. So this is the repository that I have set up for my AWS single sign-on infrastructure. I have defined a set of permission sets and mapped them to specific single sign-on groups to define user permissions. I will update the block for administrator access. Currently, I only have administrator group in the list of SSO groups. So I will update this and add PS administrator. And now let me head to my VS Code terminal and apply this change on in my infrastructure. And now that my infrastructure changes are applied, let me head back to my browser. I'm going to refresh this page. And now I have access to all the relevant AWS accounts that are maintained in my AWS single sign-on, as well as the appropriate administrator permissions. What I'm going to do next is head back to my Okta repository. And I'm going to close all my terminal sessions and then I will attempt to initiate my AWS session using AWS Vault and see what happens. This terminal session right here is a fresh session. So what I'm going to do is run AWS Vault to initiate my AWS credentials for my session. This prompt right here is waiting for me to do something on my browser. Like we saw earlier on, the web browser navigates to AWS single sign-on page where it asks me to log in. With Okta integration complete, I would expect this to be a login to Okta. So let's go and check. So let me switch to my browser. This web page is the login page for Okta, which is what I expect. So let me go ahead and log into Okta. And then as usual, to authorize the request, I'm going to go ahead and click allow and then switch back to my VS Code terminal. And I should be able to run AWS CLI without any issues. And that's it on AWS single sign-on integration with Okta. Stay tuned as I continue to explore things around automation, cloud technology, and DevOps. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, see ya.